Hey, my paranormal people, we are back. Back at the place that we investigated almost about a year and a half ago, and this town has quickly become one of our favorite locations to come to. The history, the charm, the people, the, the town of friendly folks in Live Oaks. Man, we're excited to be back, and we're investigating two new locations, historic homes, and uh, never been investigated, and you guys are coming along with us. So, we don't need a long intro today because we've already covered this, the history and, and the background of this town, but you know, if you haven't watched it, I'm gonna provide a link here. Watch the episode, it's such a good one. This town is amazing. So, without further ado, let's get this day started. So let's go and meet up with the owners of the places that we're going to and get some interviews off of them, and then that way we can get the investigation started off right tonight, so I can't wait. So come along with us as we go investigate the Friends on Walnut Street and the Carriage Step Bed and Breakfast here in the amazing, charming, historic town of Columbus, Texas. Let's go check it out. Even though we did cover some of Columbus's amazing history on the previous episode, I strongly recommend you go watch. Let's talk about some of Columbus's fun facts on this episode. Columbus, Texas was founded in 1823, making it one of the oldest towns in the state. Columbus played a role in supplying the Texan army during the Texas Revolution. Columbus is known for its pecan products, including pies and candies, and has the Columbus Pecan House. Antique collectors can enjoy shopping at the town's numerous antique shops. Columbus has a rich cattle industry history and was a hub for cattle drives in the late 1800s. The town's courthouse square is known for its beautiful live oak trees, some of which are over a century old. The Live Oak Art Center in Columbus features rotating art exhibits and cultural events and is known to be haunted, which is why we featured it on our previous episode, which you really need to go check out. Seriously, go check it out. It was really cool and a lot of fun. The town's historic district offers charming architecture and boutique shops to explore. These fun facts highlight Columbus's historical significance, cultural attractions, and unique charm. But now it's time to go check out the first place we're going to be investigating tonight. So let's go explore the Friends on Walnut Street. Here we go. So we're here with the owner of Friends of Walnut Street. So, so tell us about Friends on Walnut. Well, so it started out, it was didn't start out as Friends on Walnut huh? Street. It started out as my real estate brokerage. Okay. I bought it in 2015 from the Schindlers. It was a wonderful flower shop, family huh? flower shop. Um, and I bought it, opened up my real estate brokerage. And as I told you, I didn't really know a lot about the history in the beginning, but you asked me if I ever felt anything when I was here before. And yes. I think my answer to you at that time was, I never felt alone, but uh -huh. I didn't ever feel afraid. Sure, okay. I just sort of felt like I wasn't by myself, but, but it wasn't a scary yeah. thing. After we got the building all fixed up and I'd spoken with Mr. Moore, his wife grew up in the house as a little girl. Uh -huh. And she came over and shared with me that as a little girl, she grew up in this house. They all slept upstairs with her grandma and her aunt. Um, and she was talking about her Aunt Norma. So I simply Googled 632 Walnut Street, trying to find some of the history because all I knew, and it, you know mm -hmm. from these pictures yeah. here, Gabriel, yeah. that not this building, but the site uh -huh. was the female seminary. Yeah. And that's so, what the placard out there is right correct. now. You can, this yeah, is a and that's picture the, of that placard. Yes, okay. And so this is what it looked like when I bought it from the Schindler Flower Shop. Okay, And okay. so when I Googled 632 Walnut Street, just to get, I really was looking for history on the hurricane, tornado, stuff like that. And I saw this beautiful little face popped up and it was the obituary for Miss Norma Shaw. And I was like, oh, look how cute she is. And she's part of the story. And then I started reading all the obituaries uh -huh. of the Shaws. Yeah. But I only found out maybe roughly six weeks ago that Miss Norma Shaw died in that room wow. right there. She was in a nursing home here in Columbus and she told her family, I want to go home. Uh -huh. And so they brought her from the nursing home, brought her home. She couldn't make it up the stairs. Um, so they put a cot in this room for her. And this okay. was my 
my old real estate office. Okay. Uh, but when the yeah. Shaws grew up here, that was the dining room. Okay, yeah. And um, they put a cot there for her and she died that day. Uh, we had a yeah. customer come in uh. and he came in to visit one day and he said, can I go look upstairs? And of course we were like, sure. Uh -huh. So we comes down the stairs and he starts around this way and he sort of did a double take yeah. and he had kind of a funny look on his face. Uh -huh. So Dina said, is everything okay? And he said, um, yeah, I just thought I saw somebody going up the stairs. Uh -huh. Wow. So that was kind of another thing. Yeah. We were like, well, is there somebody here who is like oversees the people that are here? I don't know. I had a receptionist who worked here and she said she, she felt like somebody was here and she wanted to call the person Autumn. Uh -huh. I don't know who Autumn is or yeah. what she said, but we had um, a little, uh, it's almost like a little cafe sign yeah. said, hello, Autumn. Uh -huh. And it was in the kitchen and Rachel said, I went out to check the mail and when I came uh -huh. back in, it was at the end of the hallway, right here. Uh -huh. I still have that sign at my old real estate, but she said it was right here, yeah. it was facing her. And so the sign said, hello, Autumn, meaning the season. Okay, yes. So uh -huh. she just sort of named the, the spirit or whatever. Or whatever yeah. It was right here in the middle of the hall and it was facing her uh -huh. saying hello. So she said, I would just say, good morning, Autumn, in yeah. case it was a sign. But other than that, until the door, situation yes. this morning and i don't yeah. know if i want to talk well, about that I, I actually and we, we are going to talk about it we are because it's actually pretty good it. because the last time we came me and ronnie were standing in the front ronnie could have swore sure. he closed the door in fact you'll, you'll see the footage here and the door kind of went open uh -huh. I'm <laughs> Hold on. we were just doing a quick, it just, quick, I, quick interview and the door was, was like it was and the wind's not even blowing so i don't know what well, it, it is kind of it is kind of windy talking, outside but Oh, but the wind's been blowing. Yeah, I wasn't even recording. We're just we're just talking, and then all of a sudden the door. It just open. come right behind. Are you sure it was latched? Man? It was latched all well, the way. We were talking. Jeez, that's... I know that thing was latched. I know it was because well, it was windy. Okay. Because I didn't want the wind yeah. to blow it. Uh, well, there, well, there you go. go. Interesting. Okay. But you said that kind of happens right early it if does. somebody doesn't close it all the yes. way, correct? Yes. Okay. So we have a lot of customers who don't close the door firmly because they don't want to break the bevel glass. So 100 times a day, we'll have to go over there and close the door. Mm -hmm. So today, Dean and I, uh -huh. I was saying like, I'm glad that we're going to like do this and sort of like have the energy open to whatever might be here. And I'm standing right here and I'm talking to my sister uh -huh. and Dean and I, there's no one here. And Dean and I are standing there talking and the door closed. Wow. It just went like that yeah. closed. And I looked at Dean and I was like, did the door just close? I've never had the door closed. It always opened. Yeah. Okay. So this is where we keep our room, right? Uh -huh. It's been there forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Two times since y'all been here, when I come to get the broom, it's at the bottom of the stairs. Wow. However, uh -huh. my first thought was, oh, the broom fell. Because these just... things are can break. Well, they can break loose. It, can it didn't fall. look that easily, but, but I mean, it can't. I'm just saying. Okay, it yeah, fall. yeah. So two times I found uh -huh. the broom, but I was thinking if it broke loose and fell, just... I'm trying not to read anything into this. But wouldn't it be sort of like toppled? Yeah. So I'm gonna it chunk be. it down there so we yeah. can get a demonstration. Yes. And I didn't do this before. Okay. So I found it right down there by those spears, and uh -huh. it was like that. Yeah, that's that's impossible. Twice. Let's pretend made it fall, like so. it breaks loose. Uh huh. Yeah, that's exactly what I would expect to find. Toppled. Yeah, toppled. Yeah. It was propped up, and let me show you how I found it so that there's no confusion. And I don't even know how to feel about it. it was no, like that's impossible. It was like Especially that. twice. And let me tell you this, Gabriel, wow. because my first thought was, who would have left the broom? That was my first thought was, uh -huh. why did why did they, you know, one of my employees, yeah. why did they just leave the broom at the bottom of the stairs? Uh -huh. So I took it up there and I put it back. And the next time, and I don't even remember how many days apart, but when I came back, it I was back it right there again. On the stairs, and I'm like, Jeez. why is the broom at the bottom of the stairs? That I strongly recommend y'all come in here because I'm having a beer right now. So yes, you can have beer. There's wine here, good coffee, the little knickknacks that y'all can shop for. The history of the house, it's, it's such a charming, charming house that uh, to be honest with you, I, I can't wait 
to come back tonight and start this investigation. That's pretty much the story of Friends in Walnut as it is right now in a nutshell. And we are going to be staying at the carriage step, which man, I'm <laughs> pretty yeah. excited about. Yeah. But I'm going to go meet up the crew and then we're going to come later when they close down to get this investigation started. And you're going to be here. You're going to have friends that are going to be here. Oh, oh this is going to be fun. I know. Hopefully I'm looking we'll see the door close. I'm looking forward to it, whatever happens. Hopefully the door yep. closes, or maybe you hear the brew. So anyway, guys, let's go get something to drink, something to eat. Let's cool down at the brewery, meet up with the crew. So, but we'll be coming back here. You guys are be coming with us. All right, here we go. Okay guys, I'm here at the carriage step house and I just found out that Amber, the one who owns the house, she's not here. She couldn't meet up with us. So I can't get the interview off of her, but we did hear some stories coming from here. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, why, why does this keep happening in Columbus where uh, we don't get our interviews? No, but it's no, it's no big deal and it's completely understandable, but it's still a beautiful house. Uh, I'm gonna walk through it. So uh, check it out before I go to the brewery and hang out and get a drink, but this house, it's really cool. Check it out, here you go. A carriage step, crafted from stone or concrete, placed at the street as a gesture of courtesy for guests exiting carriages and stood as a symbol of status for prominent families in the community. Originally owned by Columbus founder William B. Dewees, the lot faced financial challenges leading to its sale at a sheriff's auction in 1847 to Robert Robson, who then constructed the home out of cypress wood in the 1860s and later sold it in 1879 to R.S. Stevens, a railroad purchasing agent who notably included his wife, Betty Thatcher, on the property deed, an uncommon practice in 1879. The preserved carriage step at the house, the only one known in Columbus, remains in its original location. Today, the beautiful historic home functions as a tea room and charming bed and breakfast. Now we came across the carriage step bed and breakfast after hearing stories about bands that were booked there overnight after playing at the local brewery. Now in the morning when they woke up they went and talked to the managers and the owners of the brewery and told them that they felt pretty spooked staying there overnight. Now we don't know if it's just because it's, it's an older home, but they were saying that they felt more spooked out in one of the bedrooms. And that's what we're going to explore and investigate tonight. The Hounsong Brewery. It's quickly become one of my favorites. Housing what used to be an old mechanic shop. It now has live music, great beer. Jalapeno lime beer. Jalapeno lime. It's actually really good. Amazing food, good people. And from what I hear, some unexplained phenomena. So we've had enough good beer, good cheer, and live music. It's time for us to go explore and investigate to see if we can experience some of our own unexplained phenomena. Let's go check it out. Okay, I'm going to put this sensor on the stairs. This is where they, somebody had seen a figure walking down the stairs. 
And you can hear the annoying hello, welcome in the background. So the music box is being right there in the uh, the gift room or whatever you want to call this. So there we go. All right. And also put one in here where the uh, broom fell down and down to the uh, the basement. It's right there. So ooh, it's a little it's a little stuffy down here. So, but anyway, that's where it's at. Well, let's see if uh, we can find sold down and do a session and see if we can catch or something. So here we go. Bad and Gandhi, but that's the yeah. proximity because it was it was close to the the headboard. Yeah, the headboard. They're upstairs. Pillow. Yeah, they're upstairs. Yeah, the headboard and pillow. Whoa, that was. Upstairs or over there? Oh, that, was over there. that was down here. Unless they're moving, but that was—I never heard that before. When people Me were either. Moving. Yeah. Unless they're going into the back rooms and and it causes noise. Yeah. But that did sound—that did sound like it came from over here. I decided to get up and go and try to explain the source of the banging sounds we heard. But we got to keep in mind that there were other people with us and they had gone upstairs. So I decided to turn off some of the lights and then me and Mel eventually decided to split up and go into the dining room area, the room where Mrs. Shaw had passed away in. Okay, so Rodney and Rachel are gonna stay. This room has a different feel. Rodney and Rachel are gonna stay in the front room. We're coming into what used to be the dining room and where right. Miss Shaw came. They set up her bed in here and she ended up passing away a day later, so she passed away in this room. So me and Mel are gonna post up in here. She, she uh, wanted it. It's like serious, it's very heavy. Yeah. It's very, don't play any games, no jokes. This is not the place to do that. I think It's different on the other side yeah. of the store. Rachel and Rodney are in the other room. And uh, me and Mel are here. In this room, room, in the dining room, where Miss Shaw, if you're still here, this is where you uh, passed away. And we're here with all due respect. Is this the one that you passed me on? Well, actually, you know what? I'm happy that you got to come home and that you, that you passed away here peacefully in your house your peacefully. Home. In fact, I think that's why, that's why we feel as though there's nothing but positive, loving Absolutely. energy in this house. I think she's surrounded at the time of her death. Yeah. A lot of people, I think, here. Yeah. These they, are real even, flowers. And even if she wasn't, even if she wasn't, she... She did it on her own terms, in her house where she was good when memories, she was when she was ready, which is awesome. Please come over here and join us. Let, yeah, that's upstairs. Let us celebrate your memory. Maybe you can tell us about yourself so we can share your story. Cheryl, that's upstairs. Yeah. Sure sounds like it's in this next room. I mean, you see, that's that's upstairs after determining that the sounds that we were hearing are coming from upstairs we decided to go downstairs into the basement and see if we can capture anything there Okay, we're going to spend a little time down here in the basement. It's me, Rodney, and Mel. And uh, they're, still as, they're still as talking and movement in the background upstairs, so we got to keep that in mind. But we're going to try to see if we can capture something down here. And Mel's taking pictures. Hopefully something shows itself. But is there anybody down here? Anybody ever come over here and played downstairs in the basement? Maybe you had memories of something? down here in the basement or any other reason why you would have came down here and spent some time here oh, if you're still here can you please make yourself known to us we'd really appreciate it what's up 
Um, there is something else down here. And it's, I think it's over, like, you can't see where I'm going. I think it's over. I can see you. Go ahead. There. Kind of behind you, Rodney. I just feel like there's somebody standing there. I mean, I'll see him. But I feel like that, like the energy is standing behind you. It's me standing there. And I think if we wait a second, we'll hear him. Now, the reality of paranormal investigating is that it's mostly dead air. We don't use speculative devices like spirit boxes or novelty apps on your phone to fill in that dead air. We want to give you exactly what you would probably experience if you come and investigate yourselves. So we decided to go upstairs and join the rest of the group to see if all our combined energy will help produce some results. Okay, we're on the second floor now. Used to be the little dance studio, and what else was it? We had a sandwich shop up here one time, but originally it was the Shaw family's bedroom. Ah, okay. Back in the day, and the whole family slept up here. Please feel free to step forward and say your name. You're in a safe space. Now we're all upstairs, so if there's anybody downstairs, if there's anybody here with us, we left devices downstairs so you can let us know if you're down there. If you can, please activate any of the devices so we'll know it's you. Or please feel free to come upstairs with us. So again, this is just the reality of paranormal investigating. Sometimes it's just quiet and still. And we don't feel the need to fill in that dead air using speculative devices and assuming that it's spirit communication. We understand that the paranormal doesn't happen on command, but to change things up a bit, Rodney decided that he would go downstairs into the basement by himself to see if that would somehow trigger some kind of response. It's unusually quiet down here. Well, let me know if you hear anything. Thing forward there, good boy. Roger that, good buddy. Up there. All right, it's just me alone. They're all up in the third, the second floor. Can you walk around? Can you move something? You could be on the first floor doing it. You can make some type of noise. All I need is just one thing. And if you want us out, you're gonna to have to do that. If you want me out of here, you're going to have to do that, or do something. You're welcome to, but you're not bound. Is that a fly by you, Leanne, that's bothering you? There's yeah. something that's floating all around you. It looks like a fly. Maybe it's Josiah. <laughs> I mean, it could be, but it kind of looked like an insect, but it was like just floating around you. I, don't, I just wanted to see if you heard or... <laughs> yeah, that was great. I don't know. I didn't feel it. We are all standing still on the second floor, man. So even I think even if we were moving, you probably wouldn't even hear us. Okay. That does not explain the footsteps then. Alright. 
Yeah, that's definitely not us, man. Nobody was moving at all. Uh, Mel wants to know if you want her to go down? Not quite yet. I'm still occasionally hearing some type of a stomping footstep above me. Occasionally. Yeah, that definitely is not us, man. Alright, that's cool. Well, I got it recorded, so we'll just go back and review it and see what we catch. Sounds good. I don't think the footsteps like that was you. you gotta do it louder. Alright? If you're gonna convince me you're around here, you're gonna have to do something louder. Heard that. Definitely. That's good. That's an improvement. Do it again. Stomp around, walk around again. So after hearing that knocking sound and those footsteps, some of them which you probably won't even hear using headphones, everything went quiet for all of us. So it was around this time that we all decided it was time to wrap up and move on to the next investigation. I think she'll like it. Okay, so now we're wrapping up Friends of Walnut. Such a cool, chill place. The wine, the beer's good, the coffee is excellent. Oh, Thank you so much. Lee Ann is awesome. Last time me and Ronnie came, we had an amazing time, man, meeting everybody. You know, the energy here is just welcoming, friendship, happiness, just right? I mean, it's such a yeah, good. So kind. Yeah. So but even so whatever is here, even if it's just residual, it's just a, it's just a warm, cool place to come and visit. You guys, when you're in Columbus, which I strongly recommend y'all come visit, hit up friends of Walnut. There are friends on Walnut. So thank you guys, all of y'all, for being part of the investigation. Thank you so much, Leanne. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you for thank you for having us, and uh, and we'll let you know how it goes at the uh, the carriage step. Yeah, so the investigation is not ending. Actually, we're going to part two where it's going to get really spooky. The carriage step. Here we go. It's almost, what time is it, man? 11.22. Yeah, it's getting close to midnight and we're coming back to the carriage to actually start our investigation here. So, excellent, all right, here we go. All right, we're back. I feel so much cooler. Yes, it does. Whew. All right, now we're gonna get set up and situated, so. Here we go. All right. So I'm gonna put these devices in this room over here. I'm gonna put the music box right here. There's the music box recording here and there, kind of a nice little per perimeter. And uh, we're just gonna hang out and see if we capture anything. That's gonna be the investigation. We're hanging out and see if we hear anything. So. so after a long day of investigating and exploring, we were pretty exhausted. So we decided that we would kick back and relax and just listen out to see if we may capture anything, if we may hear anything, and also hoping that one of the devices that we had set up would go off on their own. So we heard some knocks and some sounds, but we we're very fully aware that 
this is an old house and there'd be contraction and expansion going on as the evening wore on, as it got cooler outside and the settling of the house, the floorboards. And at this point in the evening, we were pretty tired. So we decided that we didn't have to get up and try to go explain the origins of those sounds. So a quick interjection here. We fully understand and we are fully aware that cat balls aren't the most credible devices to use during a paranormal investigation. We completely understand and agree that they are cheap pieces of plastic, cheap technology that are notorious for false positives. They are notorious for having the lights light up randomly, probably due to thermal expansion. But we understand that just because the lights turn on and flash doesn't mean it's spirit communication. We are fully aware that these are not sensors. There's no EMF sensor in there, that there's, there's no proximity sensors, that they only detect motion. And that's why we chose to use it this night, is because we are hoping that the cat balls would detect motion without any outside manipulation, without any explainable reason why they would move on their own accord. Having said that, let's get back into the clip. It literally is moving. It didn't just turn on. And it just stopped. Well, duh, it just stopped. I mean, Whoa, we what were the recording. Hell? Can you make it do it again? Can you light it up again, please? Why is your light on? Because I'm videoing. Oh. Pretty, please. We stopped recording because it's just been so quiet. We were sitting here just kind of talking, it. and all what of a sudden, this? there it goes, it's moving. Well, but she was moving stuff on the table. Oh, okay. So there's that, that away from it. I... Okay, yeah, she was moving at the same time. But I didn't touch it. And I can't see it. Anyways, that's what I'm trying to do is clear it. Yeah, I can't, I can't see. What, do you, what can you not see over? Uh, just because... Is it too far away? But I didn't touch it. And I can't see. But I didn't touch it. And I can't see. So we sat around for about an hour before we noticed the lights going off and that's when we noticed the ball was moving on its own. Even before Mel even approached the table and moved the objects out of the way, the ball had been moving on its own. Now there was a ceiling fan on, but the ceiling fan had been on the entire time and never moved the ball. We noticed that the ball was moving when the light started flashing. But one thing that we did not notice at the time and only caught during the editing of this video were those footsteps that were running towards us or running away from us. I know Rachel's pretty much knocked out. Uh, Rodney's about to, Rodney's about to go to bed. I'm gonna keep this camera next to me just in case. But it seems like whatever made that cat ball go off yeah <laughs> probably yeah. spin up all its energy because it's been fairly quiet except well, for a couple little pops here and there but but what was so else, what was so yeah, cool though yeah. is that it wasn't just the lights it was it was, it was moving. moving it was moving Well, good morning, my paranormal people. What a what a fun, amazing night that we had last night. Very unorthodox, unconventional, but we experienced some strange things. Uh, I mean, it, overall, both locations, it was relatively quiet. Uh, the first location, Rodney may have picked up some footsteps, and maybe by the time you guys watch this, there may be more, but as of now, possible footsteps that Ronnie picked up at the Friends on Walnut, and then the cat ball moving on its own at the carriage step house. You know, we definitely want to know what you guys think of it. What a fun, 
fun night it was. Uh, it is such a privilege to be able to come back here. This town that has become one of our favorites because of the live oaks and friendly folks. And, uh, and I hope it never changes. Just enjoyed meeting everybody that we've been introduced to, all the new friends that we made, and we are definitely coming back. Um, whether to investigate or just to hang out with our newfound friends. I mean, it's been such, such an amazing experience. Guys, I strongly recommend you guys to come visit Columbus. Uh, there's so many cool places to, uh, to explore. So anyway, I just wanted to thank everybody. Thank you, Leanne, for uh, helping us out, introducing to everybody and letting us come out and investigate your location. Thank you, Amber, for letting us stay at the uh, Carriage Step House. It's an awesome experience. And thank everybody at the brewery as well. Everybody, everybody, everywhere we've been, so friendly, so friendly. It's made this uh, road trip just that much better. But uh, anyway, just wanted to wrap it up, guys. If anybody lives in the area, if you know of places that may be haunted out here that we have missed or maybe we should add, to our future uh, road trips then by all means comment below let us know and uh, remember you are our fellow investigator as well so by all means comment below and also please like subscribe and definitely share because you guys help us help the places that we go to and as always we are doing our small part to keep history alive one ghost story at a time anyway guys thank you so much for coming along with our journey thank you for investigating with us and stay healthy stay safe we love you guys and we'll see y'all in the next paranormal road trip peace